and today we are focusing on balance. So I've, I really wanted to bring in this concept of the gunas they're called. So the gunas are like the three equalities kind of found in nature. And I think it's a really important concept when we're talking about balance and it really helps it to make it a lot more tangible. Okay. So they're called the gunas, G-U-N-A-S. Now the three of them, the first one is tamas, T-A-M-A-S. The second one is rajas, R-A-J-A-S. And the third one is sattva, S-A-T-T-V-A. So tamas has to do with solidity, mass, and inertia okay rajas has to do with um, like being dynamic as well as vibrancy sattva has to do with luminosity or the quality of light so tamas is has to do with our physical practice because it has to do with that physicality and inertia now too much tamas or solidity results in sluggishness. So there's also different times of the year that kind of fall under these. So winter is more like tamasic, you would say. It has more tamas just kind of inherently. In the winter, usually it's a little bit harder for people to get going. You know, um, it just takes more kind of motivation to get up off of the couch, things like that. It's harder to get going. So that means that there's, that it's very, it's a tamasic time of year and that you have a little bit too much tamas. So so then what do we do about that? Well, we need to bring in some rajas. So rajas is action. We use the quality of rajas to burn off excess tamas. Okay, so whenever, especially like in the winter, when we're like, oh, it's just hard to get going, then uh, more of a stimulating kind of upbeat practice will help you to burn that off. Now, uh, alternatively, in the summer, maybe, or a really busy part of your year, you know, whenever you get your mind is like rushing, 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 and it's really hard to calm down, then you have too much rajas. So then you need to bring in a little bit more grounding practices like meditation, pranayama, restorative yoga. So if you fall into that type A category, like a lot of us do, especially those of us that are drawn to vinyasa, it's really important to make sure that you are balancing these two states. When you're balancing these two states of rajas and tamas, then you are in sattva. So you're in a sattvic state, a sattvic state. So that's what we're going to try to do today through our practice. So we'll do the kind of practice that I really like to do is, you know, working harder in the beginning and then really taking the time to kind of chill out towards the end. So really balancing these two, trying to work us into a sattvic state. So let's go ahead and get started. So just starting here in, uh, let's actually extend the legs out. Now, if you did have two blocks, what you can do is place the blocks right here in front of you. Okay, so you're in a straddle, you can place the blocks here. And then what I want you to start focusing on is tilting your pelvis forward. So you might even need to bend the knees in order to be able to tilt your pelvis forward because if you've been practicing with me for a while, what we wanna try not to do is come into forward folds like this with the back rounded, okay? So if you need to sit up on your blocks even or up on a couch cushion or you know a bolster, whatever you have, then you can tilt your pelvis forward a little bit more so that you can keep the spine nice and long. So either elbows could go on blocks if you have those or just keep the hands on the ground, either is fine. Just really work on lifting the chest kind of forward and up. Shoulders away from the ears, feet are active, pointing up if possible. On your inhale, lengthen, and then on your exhale, tilt your pelvis forward more. Instead of thinking about rounding into the pose more, think about bringing the torso closer to the ground by tilting the pelvis. So keep the spine nice and long. And just breathe here. You could close your eyes. If you can go all the way down, that's fine. But, you know, just be nice to yourself. It's the beginning of class. I'd rather you be here than be touching the ground with a rounded back. Okay, so close your eyes. And just start to breathe. Notice how you're feeling in this moment. Without trying to change anything, notice your breath. Notice how you're breathing. Are you breathing deep or shallow? Fast or slow? Just 
smooth or choppy. Notice the quality of the thoughts going through your mind. And start to notice if you are in a little bit more of a tamasic or rajasic state. And just see, use that to see what you need from your practice today. Whenever I give you the chance to take breaks, do you need to be taking breaks? Or do you need to be a little bit more active? Okay, do you need to burn off a little bit more of that tamas? There's no right or wrong. It's going to be very individual to everyone. It's a great idea to do this before each time you practice so that you make sure that you get the most out of your practice. Just a couple more breaths here, really just kind of waking up the hamstrings and the inner thighs, familiarizing the body with this shape. Make sure to relax the face, the forehead, the jaw, and the eyes. And then slowly come up. You can keep your eyes crossed and then just come, or your eyes closed. Don't keep your eyes crossed. And then bring your legs into a cross position. So easy seated pose. Pull the flesh away from the sitting bones. Let the shoulders relax away from the ears as you lift the entire rib cage up away from the pelvis. Again, relax the shoulders. Reach the back of the crown of the head up towards the sky, bringing the chin into uh, parallel to the ground. Keep the eyes closed and breathe here. Let's have the palms open for now. So just having the palms open, signifying that we are ready to, again, burn off any of that excess Thomas or ready to release it. Start to deepen your breath here, breathing in and out through the nose if that feels okay for you. Drawing the lower belly very gently in and up, guiding that flow of energy of prana up. So as you inhale, expand low ribs, mid ribs, upper ribs. Exhale, upper ribs, mid ribs, low ribs, and belly. Again, inhale, low ribs, mid ribs, upper ribs. Exhale, upper ribs, mid ribs, low ribs, and belly. Do that a couple more times on your own. And let's come up with an affirmation for your practice today. So this can be individual to everyone, okay, individual to you. So think about what resonates with you. Does I am balanced resonate with you? Or if feeling balanced seems very, very unlikely, then maybe it'd be easier to say I am open to being balanced. So on your inhale, you can think, I am. On your exhale, then the second part of your affirmation. A couple more times. Good, and then circle your hands together in front of your heart into prayer. And let's begin our practice with one ohm. So take a deep breath in. Uh... And then as you exhale, just let your head hang forward. Bring your hands down to your knees. Your palms can be down now. Keep the rest of the spine straight and just let the head hang. Starting to stretch the spine, the neck, the upper back. Roll the head over to the right. Gently draw the left shoulder down. And roll the head forward to the other side. Draw the other shoulder down. And again, forward to the first side. And forward to the second side. All right, bring the head back down to center. Just let it hang. Take another breath here. Blink your eyes open. And then slowly lift your head. At any time throughout the practice, if you feel like you need to release, just inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. If you hear some like deep breathing and sniffling or weird sounds, it's my kitty. 
All right, so come onto your hands and knees, spread your fingers apart as far as you can comfortably, have your wrists under your shoulders and your knees under your hips. All right, so as you inhale, start to look out in front of you, draw the chest forward and the shoulders back slightly, look out. Exhale, round the back chin to your chest, tuck through tailbone. Inhale, look out, lift the tailbone up towards the sky. Exhale, tuck the tailbone down towards the ground, round the back. Okay, now we'll add in. Inhale, look out in front of you. And then this time as you exhale round, see if you can lift your knees a couple inches off of the mat. Inhale, look out in front of you. And exhale round, lift the knees a couple inches off of the mat. Navel the spine. Do that three more times at your own pace. Rounding through the shoulders, the rest of the spine, lift the knees, two more. Make sure you're breathing, unclench the teeth. Last one. Now let's see if you can hold this round, hold the knees up, breathe, five, four, three, two, one. Release. All right, now let's just come down to the belly and stretch out the abs a little bit after that. So uncurl the toes and bring your hands back a little bit behind the chest. Start to lift the chest forward and up, pushing into the knuckles, shoulders relax away from the ears. Think about drawing the chest forward and up, stretching the abs. And then come down, curl the toes under. Push up to your knees for modified plank, and then lift the hips up and back into your downward facing dog. So I want you to think about being in a straight line from the wrists all the way up to the hips. Okay. So a lot of times if the heels are on the, on the ground, it makes the back round. So instead, bring your feet back a little bit, lift the heels, bend the knees, push into the knuckles and send your hips up and back. Again, so you can be in a straight line from the wrists up to the hips. Keep the knuckles really firm into the mat and start to walk the dog. So push one heel down and the other heel down. And just repeat that. Waking up the backs of the legs. Good, now bring your feet as wide as your mat in your down dog and start to walk the hands back towards the feet. Turn the toes in slightly so the outside edges of the feet are parallel to each other. Hands to your shins. Inhale, reach the heart forward for monkey. Grab your opposite elbows and then exhale, fold forward. Let your arms and head hang. <sighs> Take some breaths here, in through the nose, out through the mouth if that feels okay. And then let the arms hang loose to the ground like ragdoll arms. And inhale, monkey again. Reach your heart forward, hands to your shins. Exhale, walk your hands forward into your downward facing dog. Think about rolling the upper arms, so like the shoulders, roll that out and roll the forearms in, keeping the knuckles heavy. Walk the feet towards the hands, this time bringing your big toes together to touch. So coming up towards the front of the mat, hands to your shins, inhale, reach the heart forward, monkey. Exhale, fold over your legs, you don't need to touch the ground. Push down into the feet, look out in front of you. Inhale, come up with a flat back, circle the arms overhead, palms touch. Exhale, hands to your heart, breathe here. So bring your arms by your sides for traditional Tadasana or standing mountain pose. So arms by the sides. If you feel too wobbly with the big toes touching, you can bring your feet about hip width apart, but really no wider than that. So I usually have the big toes touching. The bones might touch instead of the big toes there of the, you know, the kind of like the knuckle of the big foot and or the big toe. And then the heels can be about an inch apart. So ground down, make sure to squeeze the quads so you're not locking the knees. Have a neutral pelvis, just meaning that the booty's not popping out, it's not tucking under. You really want the front hip bones level to the back hip bones. Reach the entire rib cage up away from the pelvis and relax the shoulders, arms by the sides. Reach the back of the crown of the head up towards the sky to lengthen the neck. Breathe here. Find your gazing point or your drishti it's called. Exhale, ground down into all four corners of the feet. Let's just breathe together. So as you inhale, draw the lower belly gently in and up. Expand low ribs, mid ribs, upper ribs. 
Exhale, upper ribs, mid ribs, low ribs, belly. Do that a couple more times. Good, now exhale, ground down into all four corners of the feet. Inhale, reach your arms up overhead, palms touch. Exhale, fold, feel free to bend the knees if needed so that you can tilt the pelvis forward and point the tailbone up like we did in the cat-cow. Inhale, reach your heart forward, hands can be on the shins, monkey. Bend your knees, plant your hands. Ex exhale, step back to plank, top of a push-up. Let's break this first one down. Inhale, push forward, shoulders past the wrists, knees can come down. Exhale, lower, arms should rub on the sides on the way down, chest lands before the belly. Uncurl the toes, push the toenails into the mat. Inhale, chest forward and up, push into the knuckles, shoulders away from the ears. Exhale, come down, curl the toes under. Now, inhale, try to push up in a straight line. Instead of rolling up like this, like kind of going through a cobra, see if you can instead push up in a straight line as you inhale, and then exhale, hips up and back, downward facing dog. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Breathe here. <sighs> push into the knuckles, send the hips up and back. Ears are in line with your upper arms like your triceps. Now bring your big toes together to touch and lift your right leg up towards the sky if that feels okay. You can skip this if you like. So inhale, reach it up. Now exhale, I want you to come into plank and round your back, bring your knee towards your nose. So think about like that cat-cow when you are rounding the back. Inhale, bring it up. Exhale again, round, 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 tuck your tailbone. Inhale up, one more time. Exhale, bring it in. Inhale up. Exhale, bring the right foot down to meet the left. Bring the left leg up towards the sky. <sighs> Inhale, reach it up. Exhale, come to plank, round the back, knee to nose. Inhale up. Exhale in. Last one. Inhale up. Exhale in, round the back. Inhale up. Exhale, bring the foot down to meet the right. Hold here, or please feel free to take a resting pose, sitting back onto the heels or child's pose. If you're in a resting pose, you can close your eyes. Come back to your breath wherever you're at. All right, now you can sit back onto your heels and watch me for a moment. So I'm gonna give you an option. You definitely do not have to do this, but this is something that I call bunny hops. Okay, so it's from your downward facing dog. Just watch me. What you can do is walk the feet in and we'll bend it, bring the big toes together to touch, bend the knees, look forward, inhale, exhale, little or big hops. You can do little or big, trying more to get your hips up over the heels and see if you can try to kick your booty with your heels. The reason why we do this is because whenever you're moving through a sun salutation, instead of kind of hopping like this and being really heavy, we wanna see if you can do it really graceful and light. Okay, I like that, so let's practice. Or you can just be like, mm, yeah, right, and stay in your resting pose or down dog. If you wanna practice, come to your down dog. Walk your feet in a couple inches, big toes touch, bend the knees, inhale, look forward so you don't flip over. At the end of the exhale, little or big hop. Okay, so do three. Sometimes you might get lucky and get some hang time eventually. Okay, and then after three, walk or float to the front of the mat. Hands to the shins, inhale, reach your heart forward, monkey pose. Exhale, fold over the legs. Really feel the stretch in the hamstrings. Inhale, rise all the way up, arms out to the sides and overhead. Exhale, hands to your heart. <sighs> Breathe here. Again, find your gazing point, kind of go through the alignment, make sure that you're not locking the knees back. Breathe here and focus. <sighs> on your inhale, I am, and then on your exhale, say your affirmation. One more breath, inhale. Now exhale, ground down into all four corners of the feet. Inhale, reach your arms up overhead. 
Exhale, fold. Let your arms and head hang. Inhale, come halfway up to monkey pose, flat back. Exhale, step back to plank. <sighs> Inhale, push forward. Knees can come down or stay lifted. Exhale, chest lands first either way. Elbows in. Uncurl the toes. Inhale, chest forward and up. Cobra pose, shoulders away from the ears. Exhale, come down. Curl the toes under. Inhale, push up in a straight line to your plank or modified plank. And exhale, hips up and back, downward facing dog. <sighs> Breathe here. Roll the shoulders away from each other. Roll the forearms in. And hold and breathe. So from your down dog, walk your feet in a couple inches. Big toes touch. Bend the knees. Inhale, look forward. At the end of the exhale, walk or float to the front. Okay, inhale, monkey pose, flat back. Exhale, fold over the legs. Ground down, look out. Inhale, rise up, palms touch overhead. Exhale, hands to your heart. Bring your arms by your sides and come back to your breath. Take some cleansing breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth. Thinking about we're burning off this excess tamas, right? We're burning off all of that kind of lethargy with our practice, with this invigorating practice. So with your exhale, let go of anything that you're working up to the surface. And it's okay if you feel like you're not full of tamas, if you feel like you're more that in that rajasic state with the mind going everywhere, we're gonna get to that at the end of the practice, okay? So we'll start to really cool it down and chill out at the end. But let's just burn off everything that we need to now through this physical practice. Now let's start to add in some more poses here. So exhale, ground down. Inhale, reach your arms up overhead, palms touch. Exhale, fold. Inhale, monkey pose. Now exhale, you can either walk to plank or you can hop to chaturanga, but don't hop to plank. Push forward, lower down, uncurl the toes. Inhale, back bend, so elbows are bent in cobra. Engage the abs, come to the hands and knees. Exhale, hips up and back, downward facing dog. Breathe here. All right, so big toes touch. Inhale, lift your right leg up towards the sky. Now exhale, bring the knee towards the nose, round the back, and see if you can place the foot in between the hands without lifting the heel of the hand. You might need to try it a couple times, and it still <laughs> might not happen, but just try it and see what you can do. So right foot down, and then flatten the left foot. Windmill the arms open so that the torso is open towards the left side of the mat. Gaze out through your right middle finger, right knee's bent towards 90 degrees, right knee is on top of the ankle, and the heel is in line with the arch of the back foot. Turn the back foot in slightly. Hold here and breathe. It's a Vira Bhadrasana 2. Okay, so just make sure that the right knee stays directly on top of the ankle. Beautiful, good. Drawing the lower belly gently in and up, really expanding the ribs. So this is the beautiful thing about yoga, you guys. I see a lot of things going on in your life, right? But that doesn't mean that you can't keep practicing. And that's why I want to offer these because not everybody can go to a studio, right? At least not as, as often as you'd like. Inhale, straighten the right leg, but don't lock it, okay? Squeeze the quad so it doesn't lock. Exhale, reach out over towards the right leg and bring the right hand to the shin, left arm straight up. So here you want both shoulders directly over the bottom leg. Try not to have any rounding in the side body because if there's rounding in the side body, then there's an, a rounding in the spine. So try to melt the top rib cage down. Breathe here, this is trikonasana, triangle. <sighs> Ground down, inhale, rise up. Now exhale, bring your left hand to your left leg, right arm up and overhead, side stretch and down the right side. Now come back to your warrior two, bend your right knee. Inhale here, lift the rib cage. Exhale, windmill the hands down on either side of the right foot. Lift the back heel, so now you're in a lunge. Okay, now bring your right foot back to meet the left into downward facing dog. Either stay here or move through a vinyasa. So you can inhale, come forward, exhale, lower with or without the knees, uncurl the toes, inhale, back bend, exhale down, curl the toes under, 
Inhale, push up in a straight line to your plank. Exhale, hips up and back, downward facing dog. Okay, other side. From the down dog, inhale, left leg up and back. Exhale, round the back. See if you can place the foot in between the hands without lifting the hands. Try it again, I know it's really hard but it really comes from the rounding of the back and tucking the tailbone. Flatten the back foot, windmill the arms up, coming into your warrior two. Okay, so left heels in line with the arch of the back foot, turn the back toes in slightly, arms up and parallel to the ground, gazing out through the left middle finger. Have the left knee right on top of the ankle and pull the back hip back only as far as you can go without the knee coming in. Breathe here, relax the face. Be happy you're burning off that excess Thomas, right? Hope you guys are getting sweaty because I definitely am. Now inhale, straighten the left leg, but don't lock it, squeeze the quad. Exhale, reach out over the left leg, left hand down, right arm up. So here also, try not to let the head hang. You wanna keep the neck in line with the rest of the spine. Melt the top rib cage down so that your spine is nice and long. Breathe here, trikonasana, triangle. <sighs> Doesn't matter how far you go, it matters that both shoulders are directly over the bottom leg. <sighs> Ground down into the base of the front big toe. Inhale, come up. Bring your right hand to the right leg. Exhale, side stretch, tarp arm up and over. Come back to your warrior two, bend the front knee. Inhale, lift the rib cage up. Exhale, windmill both hands down on either side of the left foot. Lift your back heel, come back to downward facing dog. Move through a vinyasa. Inhale, come forward to plank, shoulders past the wrist. Exhale, lower with or without the knees. Uncurl the toes. Inhale, chest forward and up, Bhujangasana, Cobra. Curl the toes under, engage the abs. Exhale, downward facing dog. Adho Mukha Svanasana. So hold here and breathe, or again, you can take a resting pose or get a drink. Just turn your gaze inward. All right, if you're not in your down dog, make your way back to your down dog. Let's do one more flow here. Bring your big toes together to touch. Inhale, right leg up. Exhale, bring it through, low lunge. Round the back and bring it through. Now bring your back knee down and then stand tall on the knees, okay? So I like to have the back toes curled under. It feels better on my knee. If it still hurts your knee, you can fold your mat over under the knee or put a blanket or something under, okay? Lengthen the tailbone down to bring the pelvis into neutral again, meaning front hip bones level to the back hip bones. And then push the right knee forward as far as you can go without your booty popping out, okay? If you just kind of plop into the pose, you've gone too far. That means your booty's kind of popping out. It's gonna compress the low back. So just back out of it so that you can engage the low abs and lengthen the tailbone down. Arms can come up and roll the shoulders away from each other. So that's the same action that we wanna do in down dog. If you wanna take a peek at my shoulders, instead of being here, you wanna roll the shoulders away from each other, really bringing in a lot of space here at the neck. This is Kneeling Warrior or Anjane Asana. All right, now start to bring the hands down on either side of the right foot. If you have blocks, this would be a place where you could put your hands on blocks. Okay, so instead of really having the back rounded, I want you to see if you can try to draw the chest forward and then see how I'm bringing my spine. It's a lot straighter instead of being here. That's why it's easier with blocks. So if you have them, grab the blocks. Draw the chest forward, shoulders back. Now from here, start to bring the hips back so that they end up above the back knee and lift the front toes off of the mat, like the front ball of the foot. Now only straighten the front leg as far as you can go without rounding the back. If you round the back, you've gone too far. Bend the knee, draw the chest forward. Okay, tuck the chin slightly. Chest forward, shoulders back. This is half splits. So just focus on feeling a stretch in the back of the leg, not feeling any pain, just a stretch. If you feel pain, you've gone too far. Relax the face, relax the jaw. 
getting pretty close to the to our pinnacle pose okay and then we'll start to relax after that now bend the front knee again bring both hands inside of the right foot and walk the right foot over to the right now turn the toes out slightly and have the knee pointing in the same direction as the toes Okay, so same direction. Now keep the hips pretty square here, so you're not falling off to the side. You wanna keep the hips square. You could do little pulses. If you have blocks, you could bring your forearms onto blocks, or if it's available to you, forearms to the ground. Just make sure, again, not to dump off to the side. Keep the hips square. Keep the right knee directly on top of the right ankle. Breathe. Relax the face, relax the jaw. Notice where you kind of hold on to tightness and just relax that. Come back to your affirmation. Good, and then slowly come up and make your way back to your downward facing dog. Let's not do a vinyasa here, just in the interest of saving time, big toes touch. Inhale, left leg up and back. Exhale, bring it through, low lunge, right knee down. Rise up, okay? So lengthen the tailbone down so you have a neutral pelvis. Push the knee forward so it ends up right on top of the ankle. Arms up, wrap the shoulders so it's like you're trying to close the armpits. Lift the entire rib cage up away from the pelvis to lengthen the spine. Just make sure your shoulders don't hike up. Breathe, find your gazing point. I am balanced or I am open to being balanced. If your arms are too tired, you can always do prayer as well. Good, now bring the hands on either side of the left foot. You can have the left knee really bent here, okay? Lift the ball of the foot and the toes up off the mat. Reach the chest forward and up. So it's gonna help you if you think about lifting your tailbone up towards the sky, like sticking your booty out, and then drawing the chest forward and the shoulders back. That'll really help. Then only straighten the front leg as far as you can go without the tailbone getting pulled back under. All right, now bend your knee, hands inside of the left foot, walk the left foot over to the left side of the mat and turn the toes out. Again, left knee's directly on top of the ankle, knee is pointing in the same direction as the toes. Okay, you can stay here or do some pulses or forearms on blocks or the ground, depending on what props you have available. Relax the face, breathe. Make your way back up onto your hands, downward facing dog, full stretch, push it back. Inhale, come forward to plank. Exhale, lower with or without the knees, uncurl the toes. Inhale, chest forward and up, cobra, shoulders away from the ears. Exhale, push yourself up and back to your downward facing dog. Breathe here. All right, now walk your feet forward towards your hands. Big toes touch. Inhale, reach your heart forward, monkey pose. Exhale, fold over the legs, push into the feet, look out in front of you. Inhale, come up with a flat back, palms touch overhead. Exhale, hands to your heart. Now bring your arms down by your sides. Breathe here in your standing mountain pose. Come back to your affirmation. All right, so now take a wide stance. So come like long on your mat, bring your arms out to your sides in a T, point the fingers down. Bring the feet apart so that they're under the fingertips. You want pretty wide stance, okay? Turn the toes in slightly so the outside edges of the feet are parallel to each other and bring your hands to your hips. 
Inhale, do a big shoulder roll, lengthen the spine, and then exhale, tilt the pelvis forward. Hands can come to the ground or the shins. Inhale, reach your chest forward like a monkey pose, and then exhale, fold. So just hang here, let the head hang loose. If you're really bendy in your knees, make sure that you're not hyperextending or locking the knees back. So squeeze the quads to take that hyperextension out. And then inhale, rise all the way up. Exhale, start to heel toe your feet towards each other. All right, and then just walk your feet together and start to walk it out a little we'll start bit. Start to work towards our pinnacle pose, which is called firefly. This is the portion of the class where I, it's kind of like workshoppy. So we're all gonna be going to different places with this pose, totally fine. The very first variation is actually just gonna be malasana or yogi squat. Okay, so bring your feet about as wide as the mat. So if you're facing this way, just bring them about as wide as the mat. Okay, and then bring your hands down towards the ground. You can bend your knees and lift your heels up. Okay, so from here, turn the knees out. So the heels are coming in and the, um, the heels are turning in and the toes and the knees are turning out. So your heels might be lifted or you might be able to bring them down to the ground. Okay, it doesn't matter. Just go to where you can comfortably. Knee, elbows to the inside of the knee, and then kind of push the knees away to lengthen the spine. You can come into prayer with the hands and breathe here. All right. So this could be somewhere where you want to stay. If you want to come somewhere more comfortable and watch me, what you can do is just come to seated, however it feels good for you. And then just watch how I'm going to get into this pose. And then I'll talk you through it as well. But just watch me first. So just be somewhere comfortable while you watch me. Maybe even extend your legs out, shake them out, do what you need to do. All right. So the pose we're going to do now is called firefly pose, okay, or titibasana. So just watch me. I'm going to come here again into kind of like that. Um, it's not a full wide leg forward fold, but a mini wide leg forward fold. Okay, then from here, let's see, I'll kind of go at an angle like this. From here, I fold as far as I can, my knees are bent, and then I'm gonna lobster claw they caught. So I'm gonna go like this, and I'm gonna lobster claw each calf, and then see if, how far I can push my shoulders under my legs. As I do that, I walk my feet in just a little bit, bring the fingertips down to the ground behind me, then I start to flatten my hands, which will bring my booty down a little bit. This is the hard part because here you really want to fall back. So try not to let that happen. Okay. And then see if you can start to lift your feet off the ground somehow. Okay. The next variation then would to be to see if you can start extending the legs out, rounding the back, straightening the legs. Okay. <laughs> So let's try it and just see what happens. You're not gonna be like enlightened once you can do poses like this. You're not gonna be like, oh my gosh, I'm totally enlightened now. Does it make you better at yoga if you can do this pose? It doesn't make you worse at yoga if you can't do this pose, okay? Doesn't matter. You're good at yoga if you're doing yoga, okay? So let's just get that clear before we even try it. Whew. Okay, let's give it a shot. So just kind of fold forward. You're in your mini wide leg forward fold lobster claw each calf and then push 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 your shoulders under walk your feet towards each other a little bit bring your fingertips down behind you and let your booty start to come down slightly flatten your hands okay then start to lean back and see if you can lift your feet up without falling then extend the legs out as you can Straighten the arms, round the back, navel the spine, tuck the tailbone. So here, see everything's coming in that we've already done. Round, 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 round. And then you can come down. So we were practicing that Uddiyana Bandha. We were practicing that rounding of the spine and drawing the, spine, the, the, the navel in and up, right? To really get that lifting action. So if you practice those poses that we were doing, like the um, down dog to the plank, where you round and bring the knee to the nose, and the cat and cow where you round and really focus on drawing your navel up, 
those poses are really going to help you get into poses like firefly and to be strong enough. The poses that we did that really help you to be flexible, to build your flexibility to get into this pose was like lizard pose. So lizard pose is great for so many different poses, but this is a really great prep pose for firefly. All right, we did it. <laughs> come down to seated. Whew, let's come to an easy cross leg pose. Pull the flesh away from the sitting bones. Make sure that your pelvis is neutral so your tailbone's not tucking out, your booty's not popping forward. Lift the entire rib cage up and relax the shoulders away from the ears. Let's now, let's have the palms open just for a little bit longer. Bring the chin parallel to the ground and close the eyes. Take some cleansing breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth. Letting go of all of that excess tamas and anything that we worked up to the surface that we no longer need, letting it go. Bringing your gunas, in, gunas into balance, bringing them into more of a sattvic state. And then turn your palms down onto your knees. Now signifying more grounding. Doing some more internal practices here by slowing down the breath. So doing just a very simple pranayama. So as you inhale, see if you can breathe into five. And then exhale to eight. So this is Visamavritti or unequal breathing. It's a very grounding, calming breath. As you do this, let your face soften. See if you can breathe into five. And as you breathe in, let your belly expand now. So we weren't, weren't really expanding the belly, but now really expand the belly and the ribs and then exhale ribs all the way down through the belly. Incorporate your affirmation for a few rounds. Good. And now let's stay like this, but come into a forward fold to start to get into the hips a little bit. So pull the flesh away from the sitting bones and do a big shoulder roll. Inhale, lengthen the spine and then exhale, tilt the pelvis forward. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, tilt. If you have a stool or something, you could place a stool right here under your forearms or blocks. You could put your elbows on blocks. Try to keep your spine nice and long for the first few breaths and then we can round into it. Make sure you're not holding on to any tightness in the forehead, eyes, or jaw. And then round into it because I know it feels good. And then come up and switch the cross of the leg. So just extend the legs out, switch the cross. Again, pull the flesh away from the sitting bones, big shoulder roll, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, tilt the pelvis, so lift the tailbone up. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, tilt the pelvis forward, lift the tailbone up. Tuck the chin slightly, breathe. Relax the face, relax the jaw. Keep the chest reaching forward for now. And then you can round into it. And slowly come up. 
All right, now extend the legs out in front of you and just let the feet go from side to side, just releasing the knees a little bit from being bent. All right, now take your mat. We're actually going to lay down on the mat. So if you have blocks, you could do this with blocks, but I'm just gonna show you how to do it with the mat. We're gonna do a, a, a final resting pose here and a heart opener. So just start to roll your mat up. This is the easiest thing to do the easiest way to do this heart opener. Okay, and then we'll place it behind you. Okay, so you'll bring your, you'll bring it about, oh, two inches from the low back, okay? And then you can bring your hands behind you, start to lay back, okay? So you want your booty to stay on the ground. You don't wanna lift your booty up, but tuck your tailbone, then start to lay all the way back. You really want your head to be supported, okay? On the rolled up mat. Let your feet be wider than like where the mat would be. Let the feet fall out to the sides. Roll the shoulders away from the ears. Palms are facing up. Close your eyes. Again, start to deepen and lengthen the breath. Breathe in to five and out to eight. Incorporate your affirmation for a couple of rounds. Then just start to detach from thought. So just starting to let it go. Start moving through the body, releasing any tension that could be left. Starting at the crown of the head, making your way all the way down, letting go of any tension, any tightness. Moving down over the face, the forehead, the eyes, the jaw. Down over the neck and the shoulders, all the way down the arms, through the fingers, the chest and the shoulders, the upper back, all the way down over the diaphragm, the belly, the mid and low back the pelvis, the upper legs, and all the way down through the knees, the shins and the calves, the feet and the toes. Let the ground carry your body weight. If there's things going on around you, it's totally fine. Take that as a cue to remind you to relax even further. And enjoy these last few moments in silence and in Shavasana.
Start deepening your breath, coming back to the body, coming back to the present moment. Start to bring some gentle movement into the fingers and the toes. And the wrists and ankles. You can turn your head gently from side to side. And if it would feel good, reach your arms overhead for a full body stretch. I know you're on that rolled up mat, so just however it works. And then a roll onto your right hand side, rolling off of your rolled up mat, using your right arm for a pillow. Take a couple breaths here and feel the lungs and ribs expand in every direction, the front and the back and the sides. Good. And with the strength of your arms, slowly push yourself up to an easy seated pose. Let your head be the last thing to come up. Come to an easy cross-legged pose. Close your eyes. And again, tune in. Notice how you're feeling now at the end of your practice. Compare your breathing to how you were breathing when you first sat down on your mat with me today. Are you breathing deeper? more smooth, slower. Compare the type of thoughts going through your head and just the energy of those. Notice your state of mind. And there's no right or wrong, we're just observing. Notice how your body feels. And then circle your hands together in front of your heart into prayer. Let's show gratitude for our practice and close our time together with one ohm. Take a deep breath in. And then you can bow down to where it feels good for you. Bring your thumbs from your heart center up to your third eye, acknowledging the energy that's within you, around you, connects us all together and never goes away. That energy within me acknowledges the energy within you. And I thank you all so very much for letting me guide you through your practice today. Namaste. Namaste.